So we cover a lot of NFT news here, and there's always something new to cover. There's a lot of misconceptions with NFTs, and people want to know what's next. So who better to help us with where NFTs are headed than talking to the global managing director of eToro Art, Guy Hirsch. Guy, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Can you tell the people a little bit about what your position at eToro is and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? So eToro is a global company. We are a multi-asset broker dealer. And now with DeFi and NFTs, we have decided that we're going to evolve into this, uh, in, in, into this new economy. And so my job is to build a bridge between what eToro has built throughout the years into this new way or new finance or new tech um, and make sure that our users have exposure to all these new assets, the DeFi assets, NFTs, and so on and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening in this space. And one of the interesting things I saw was that eToro was, uh, has a $20 million NFT fund to support new digital art. Can you tell us more about this fund and what your plans are with that? Sure, absolutely. So part of our overall kind of Web3 strategy and Compass is set, setting up this fund, which would allocate eToro funds into NFTs. So much like when we're buying Bitcoin or buying ETH into our own balance sheet, in a very similar way, we want to have these assets, NFTs, DeFi assets on our balance sheet as well, because of two reasons. One, we believe that these assets would appreciate in value over time. And secondly, we want to engage with the communities and the creators behind these wonderful projects and make sure they know we intend to be a leader in the space. No, I love that. I love that. I mean, a lot of companies over the last two years have been putting crypto on their balance sheets. You know, you're one of the few that I'm hearing that are putting NFTs on your balance sheet. That's, that's really cool. And then also some DeFi assets as well. That leads me to like, how did you get involved with Web3? Like what got you interested in Web3? When, when did this all start with you? So I think the, the kind of the primary example of Web3 with meaning decentralized protocols is really Bitcoin. Uh, okay. So I was in San Francisco when it all started uh, and started hearing kind of chatter around it. Um, in uh, 2013, I was at Samsung leading uh, a retail innovation team, building uh, kind of the first point of sale system for Samsung. And this was the first time that this in a business context, I proposed to integrate Bitcoin as a payment option for what, Samsung. 20, 2011? Like what, what year are we talking here? 2013. 2013, gotcha. Okay. 2013, 2014. Um, and so this was my first kind of business um um endeavors surrounding bitcoin and DeFi, and then in december of 2017 i joined eToro to establish and lead eToro us and that is uh that was a lot more uh head-on kind of crypto endeavor type type job to get people into crypto and we've built a very uh, fantastic business in the us and now my job is to go even further and get uh, eToro users into the world of DeFi, open Web3 wallets, engage in uh, and DeFi in a much more meaningful way. And I'm very excited about that. So it was, it was like a gradual process. You started with Bitcoin in 2013, then you got joined eToro to get people into crypto. Now you want to get them into DeFi and other digital assets. I, that, I love that. And that leads me to the question, how, what would you tell the public? You know, people like maybe my dad or someone who's kind of skeptical about DeFi. You know, I'm all about it. I think it's very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in it, but how would you, what would you tell people that are skeptical or the older people that are just not understanding the concept? What would you tell them when it comes to investing in DeFi and NFTs? I, I, I think there are two ways to go about that conversation. I think it's a fascinating conversation. One is a more kind of philosophical um, question about ownership and the right to transact and kind of under uh, other fundamental rights that you gain by owning your own keys and mm -hmm. making sure that no one can confiscate your assets um, and you are in control. No one, no one gets to tell you what to do with your money and who to transact with and when to transact. And it's all basically kind of peer to peer on all sorts of open source project, which I believe is a better world for, you know, for, for, for all of us. So that is on the kind of philosophical side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then on, on the investing 
side of things, people should uh, definitely pay attention to what's happening because generally speaking in, in investing, you want to diversify your portfolio. It's something that you really believe in. You want to make sure that you have a well uh, kind of balanced portfolio and, and to the degree that you're comfortable to the degree that the risk that you're willing to take, because these are still very high risk assets, uh, you should consider allocating to all sorts of really new and exciting uh, um, um, investment or not, not investment products, but a, a new way of how finance should um, basically uh, be condu conducted, whether these are staking protocols that allows you to earn interest on, on a token that you, that you own, which is akin mm -hmm. to earning a bit of a yield on, on the dollars that you have in your bank. Right. So these are the things that people should start paying attention to from an investment investment perspective, but still keep in mind these are high risk uh, type of activities. Yeah, absolutely high risk. And we've seen some bad news when it comes to some of these high risk assets in the last two, three weeks. But you're right. It's, it's, it's a matter of diversification. If you can diversify and incorporate a piece of your portfolio into these assets, you know, I, I do agree with you there that it makes a lot of sense. I want to wrap up with this question. So obviously NFTs have been you know, in the limelight now over the last year. They're getting a lot of, they're becoming mainstream. What do you see as far as utility for NFTs? Obviously there's one, one point of digital ownership that's good, but what about utility? Right now the only utility that I really see is like, uh, you know, access to like a private discord or something like that. What other utility do you see when it comes to NFTs in the future? Oh, the, the sky's the limit. And I think this is what's exciting about NFTs that it's not really just or, or you shouldn't look at it just from the prism of an, an investment uh, because NFTs in many cases are pure digital art. You just like the artist, you like what they've kind of come up to and you buy it because you feel some sort of an emotional connection to the artist um, and, and, and to the piece that, that they've created. In terms of utility, we see all sorts of really exciting experiments such as using NFTs as tickets to concerts, yeah. to, to all sorts of, you know, DJs are are issuing NFTs as tickets. We see a lot of play to earn games where you, in, in order to play the game, you have to have an NFT. And then you, if you are successful in the game, you get cryptocurrency, right. you get actual money that later is, you know, can be redeemed to, to dollars or to other kind of fiat currencies uh, in the game. You see all sorts of really exciting kind of also some sort of membership benefits where you are getting uh, invited to kind of exclusive access to all sorts of, if it's, let's say, if it's a musician to uh, some kind of unique creations that yep. they're, they're not releasing to the public. So really there's all sorts of really awesome utilities that we see out there. And I'm, I'm very excited about the future with regards to NFT is because it's not just an investment. It's also a way to engage with fans and a way to engage with customers. And this is not going away. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. I think especially uh, I'm a big sports fan. So sporting, sporting te sports teams can use this as a way to connect with their fans. And then also the move to earn games and move to play games like that. That to me is very, very exciting. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Well, guys, this has been a really awesome uh, chat. Thank you so much for taking the time today to, to hang with us. Where can people follow you to keep updated on what you're doing and what eToro is doing for the future? So eToro.com or download eToro from the from the App Store. Go to eToro.art to check out check out our collection. And for me personally, uh, at guy here on Twitter, that's easy. Hey y'all! Thanks for watching. Make sure you tune in every day. Also hit that like, subscribe, and notification button. We'll see you tomorrow.